Good morning, everybody. We're coming to you live from inside the main build facility here at Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. I'm Tom, and we all know the master Bubba. Good morning, Bubba. How you doing? Hey, man. Good morning. I'm doing really good so far. Already under full tilt here at Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. Every part of this business is literally running wide open throttle right now. Well, we have to say it's brought to you by Bubba's uh, Exotic Motorsports at Bubba's Exotic Motorsports.com. Monkey in Paradise, it helps keep us going. Monkey in Paradise, energy drinks. Wait, that doesn't Tastes help keep just us like going, vodka. that slows us down. Oh, really? I thought so. Monkey in Paradise reminds you to drink responsibly. Monkeyinparadise.com. What's your paradise? How about that? TonyRienzi.com, Bub Miss Outlaw Boutique.com in Jupiter, man. The best of the best. Absolutely the best. I think that's considered what? The Mapoga Pride. Mapopo? What? Never mind, dude. You're so far behind. I really this guy. am so far behind. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk to you a little bit about disc brake conversions today. That's this is uh, as you know, this was lot 378 coming out of Barrett Jackson. Uh, our client that lives up in Toronto, Canada, purchased this vehicle and sent it directly in for Bub to get started with it. It's a really, really cool build, Bub. We had a little bit of a hold up. Uh, one of uh, uh, the brackets that they sent initially uh, was wrong. You had to get yep. that through and recreate. Re Corrected, corrected, recreated. I feel like corrected. I don't know which. What are you trying to say there? Recreated or corrected? Yeah, I was kind of blending two words there. Okay, so recreate director. That recorrect directed. How's that, done. ladies and gentlemen? So we're going to talk about this, bub. Um, you've done a lot of little work that people don't see behind the scenes on oh, this for vehicle. Sure. Um, for example, once you took this, uh, started taking the truck apart, you found that, for example, in the wheel well here. Well, I'll the get wheel, to that now. Okay. Yeah, I feel like you're getting, they're throwing the whole cat out of the bag at this point. Okay. Okay. I need to go back to the start, though. Come on. Hold on. So, bub, let's let's start from the beginning then a little bit and talk about the first thing you're doing is taking off that different. I'm cover. trying to show you this. Okay. Let me see it. For, because you don't understand. Okay. The Mapogo Pride of South Florida. Perhaps it's the stigma attached to them that accentuates their aurora, but they are the most intimidating lions that I have laid eyes on. Show the audience. Do you understand the picture and what you're seeing? No, I don't. Who is the Mapogos? It's just that simple. So you already threw it all out there. Oh, okay. Monkey in Paradise. TonyRienzi.com. Miss Outlaw Boutique. Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. That is the pride. That's wow. it. Ladies and gentlemen. Did you get where it all tied together right there? We have the pride. I did. I, the whole I thing. I got it. Top notch. Top notch, man. Chilling. Absolutely top notch. That's it. So the now best keep, of the best. Now keep going on. So let's talk about how the wheels were rubbing. Okay, so Bob, one bad. of the I'm things you noticed, this. one of the things you noticed in this particular build is that the wheel arches had signs of scrubbing in it. Could you please turn the letter? The contestant asked for a vowel. Ooh, ah. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, so Bub noticed that there was some scrubbing. What did you find? Again, this is why you have to be so careful with what you buy and how you buy well, things, the danger of auctions. Well, yeah, and this is, I think this is a great point for everybody out there, fans, people who are even potential buyers in the industry, um, you know, or just other you know, guys who have done this in the past. It's just not acceptable. It's not, period. Plain and simple, um, when you do any sort of work on any of these vehicles, you have to understand you are putting someone's life in your hands when they are driving a vehicle that you have built you are putting their life in your hands and you know what man you have to take serious pride in that and do a top-notch quality job every time and this for an example was a vehicle that rolled through from barrett jackson the most sought after auction block in the in entire world. world for cars classics customs exotics trucks bikes any of it you name it that's where you go if you want to spend top dollar and get the best item you can possibly buy in the industry this is not an example of it. This truck is a great condition truck. It is probably a eight and a half, nine out of 10. Nothing wrong with it in terms of the way it was built, the quality of what was done. Super solid platform. However, the shortcuts that we have found are not acceptable and they're not taking someone's other, some other person's life into that. How about, how about, how about respect for their money? Well, that's the biggest thing. So, and what I mean by that is- Or their name or reputation. What you see here is, as I just showed, where the tires rubbing in the inner wheel well, that is nothing more than incorrect backside spacing on a rim. We've talked before when this truck first came in about the size of the meat we can put underneath of this truck. These things have a very large distance between the inner fender well and the outer fender well. Probably if I were to, if I physically measure this, I guarantee a minimum 12 inches I can put tire underneath of that truck. This thing's running on a set of nine and a half intro wheels, not very wide considering it's got 12 inches of room and it was still scrubbing. So one, the measurements were taken incorrectly. Two, it was a set of wheels that they just had stuck on because they looked really good. They looked great. Or three, they just didn't do it right. It's just that simple. One of those three items, there's no arguing it. There's no other way about it. So what was done was once they have seen that this was rubbing, 
nothing more than washers. Five washers were put between the brake drum and the backside of the wheel, the hub of the wheel, to space it out an eighth of an inch so that it didn't rub on the inner fender wells. That's very, very poor, very incorrect, and not okay quality by any standard in any part of the automotive industry. It doesn't matter if I'm talking lowest end on the rung, Jiffy Loop. And but I do work like this. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. I recognize those washers. Those are actually the thrust washers yeah, that came from the set of lugs. With the set of universal lugs. This was a cheap way to, to treat a client and not a good thing for the reputation of your company or your name altogether. So what Bub did is went ahead and removed these. Uh, he removed these spacers and then removed the backing plate uh, from the axle tube itself. The first step you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is removing the differential cover, which is sitting right here on the floor. Once this differential cover uh, has been removed, which is this black back part that you see right here, that covers the differential up. Once this is removed, Bob, you're able to get to the axles themselves, correct? Yes. And I'll let you go ahead. You can step so, in. In a correct world, in a, let's say you had to do a shortcut. These are intro wheels. These are probably a realistic between three and $5,000 for this set of wheels and tires. In a correct world, you would use a spacer. If it, you, maybe you did take a wrong measurement, all good. Quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, all good. It happens, it shouldn't, but it happens. You put on a billet spacer. This is true, it is hub-centric. It is set so that you slide it on the Would studs. you tell everybody what hub-centric means, please? Yeah, so it's the center bore is the exact same size of what the axle itself would be so that it's not sitting on here relying on the five studs. Maybe they're 7 16 half inch, whatever they are. It relies on the actual hub, the center of the axle or on the front wheel bearings. However the system may be, if it's a drum brake system, disc brake system, it relies on that center diameter to hold this center so it can't wobble around. So it doesn't wobble, you don't get a vibration. So this would be a half inch, this would be a one inch. A lot of guys use one inch spacers, two inch spacers, one and a half, depending on how you want that staggered fitment to look on your car. Maybe you've got a great set of wheels and tires that are brand new, but you want to bump it just a quarter of an inch to get that really aggressive to the body line lip. Most companies in the wheel industry build conservative, they do. They keep them in a little bit, so if you have a full load on your car, it's not on them because they take a wheel that's pushed out too far. So they build conservative, they're in a couple millimeters. You can bump them out sometimes up to a quarter, half an inch, and that'll really set your body line aggressive with the wheel super flush as long as you have perfect clearances. Bob, can you tell everybody what these are made out of? The audience can't tell because they're very yeah. light. And no, these are, these are nothing more than billet aluminum. It's a high-grade billet aluminum. Zero problems with these, zero safety factor at all. The only time you have to worry about safety and consideration when you're doing spacers like this is when there's no studs because you're literally using a half inch addition of the stud that you would have, for example, on your axle um, on the front of your vehicle. Wherever that stud is that's coming through, you want to make sure you have enough to get at least eight to ten turns of your new lug nut on here still. If you don't and you still want to run these, you have to change out those studs to something longer. Something Not hard to do. Push them out, pull them in. Right. That's simple. Absolutely. But uh, on your axle here, the axles are literally slid through the axle tube right here that you see behind me. Uh, if you can point it out, Bob, where the bearings are. Right this spins on a, on a set of bearings right there. And this axle itself right here, as you can see, has splines. These are splines right here. And you'll hear people talk about the count, the spline count or whatever it is. Um, these splines intermesh in the differential. And when you apply power through the drive chain, drive chain, it comes from the differential in the back and transmits through these splines to this rotating drive shaft itself. And the bearings you just saw Bob point out ride right in here. That's why rear end differential fluid is so important to keep clean and change often. Bob, let's talk a little bit about what you found here with the, with the lugs as well. Yeah, man. So, um, you know, this is another one of those situations, I got it, where people do modifications, um, I don't know, what, I don't want to say it in a bad way because I don't want to downgrade what was done, uh, but it just wasn't right. It wasn't a direct fit out of the box, off the shelf, bolted on, like a lot of today's world brings you. Today's technology, today's world, today's products, today's companies that are out there, whether it's Classic Performance, Get Disc Brakes, Right Stuff Detailing, Bayer, Willwood, all of these companies, SSBC, everybody out there, the big name industry, they've done the R&D time of stuff that comes out of a box and bolts right on for the end do-it-yourselfer, builders like myself, anybody across the world. They build them for a reason, a specific way. This kit, when it was done, because of these wheels again, 
this set of wheels that was put on here, good, granted, a great, you know, great value in wheels, they look great, they fit this application perfect in terms of the looks, the styling of it. The fitment, not so good. But what was done was this truck originally was a six lug truck. So now here's another modification that was done to both the axle and the brake drums themselves to go from a six lug down to a five lug. The other side was very poor quality in terms of the way it was cut, it was welded. You can actually see where there was an original piece of a stud here that was kind of drilled and overlapped on top of to make this happen. So now what you're left with is a truck that has a numbers matching rear in it, 68 Chevrolet C10 that was factory at six lug, and then you buy a six lug disc brake conversion kit. What the truck is, what it should be, Classic Performance has done their job at sending us everything we need to do start to finish disc brake conversion kit, all direct fit bracketry, so it all goes right along. However, now you're down to this part. How is this rotor that's meant for this truck with six lugs? This, ladies and gentlemen, go. is what we call the rotor. Uh, and real quick, I'll explain this to you. Unlike conventional drum brakes that use the brake shoes themselves to push out against a brake drum to stop, the brake rotors use brake pads that squeeze here. It's what's found on all of today's conventional vehicles. And when the brake fluid flows through the caliper, it, it causes friction here, and that's what stops the vehicle. So now what you're left with is a company that sent us a kit, perfect for this truck. 110% perfection is key, it goes right on, it's done. However, now you've run into what happens in everyday life in this industry with these older cars. And this is why they're such a pain to deal with because over the years, people are always dicking with them, man. They're always messing with them. They're always doing something shoddy. They're always cutting a shortcut somewhere to make something happen because they had the part from another car from a 64 Ford and made it fit a 71 Chevrolet, all kinds of nonsense. This is another perfect example. There's a set of wheels put on this truck because they had the wheels. It was put on the truck and then the truck was modified. That does nothing for future building and application upgrade. Now we're stuck with, do you replace the cost of the wheels or do you take a brand new disc brake conversion kit and modify this, drilling, milling, shaving, adjusting everything so that this now will fit onto these axles or do you go buy a thousand dollar worth of axles? So, so there's so many different things that come into play that you look at and you're like, man, you guys just messed up all of this and now someone else has to pay for it, time and money. Time and money, right? There we go, Bob. So this will not fit on the axle itself. The correct rotor will not fit on the axle itself. So what is Bob gonna do? Bob will remove the What am I going to do? What are you gonna do? I don't know, I wanna hear. It's your, it's your paradise. Well, monkey tell me, what I, I wanna know what I'm gonna do because I feel like you're gonna have a monkey in paradise and chill out and just do it slow. Hey, literally, if I had MIP and OJ, I'd sip through it and just do my thing. I'd flow. I'd be doing it Bubba style. I'd be chilling and flowing. What we have here, ladies and gentlemen, are what we call lugs, wheel lugs, okay? Yep. And these are what your lug nuts spin onto and hold the tire to the axle, okay? The rotating axle. And if I were to probably guess, I'm gonna throw this one out there because of the modification done here onto, or I'm sorry, on the axle itself, I guarantee you it will have a different thread pitch of those lug nuts. How much do you want to bet? So now the client will have 10 lug nuts in the rear that do not match the lug nuts in the front. And that's probably not how a, you like to build Probably now. a 12 by 1.5, that was GM's thing, not 7 16ths. I guarantee that's a 12 by 1.5. So now you can see the run in. Now keep in mind this client has waited patiently for his vehicle for two months. And while everything else has been completed, you're down to, and I had to speak to the client yesterday and just be very honest with him, yeah. we've got some fitment issues here because of what other people have done. And this is what, I mean, we run into this guys out there. If, you, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, I'm sure you run into it as well in terms of electronics, in terms of small things. This is a very small job for what we're doing. It's a nice direct fit disc brake conversion kit built specific for this truck. It should have been out of the box, lay it out on table as you see, as we always do here at BEM. You lay everything out, you organize it, you set your stuff where it's got to go, and you just go through the instructions start to finish, you install it, and it's done. But sure enough, because of someone else over the years, that I makes think our job twice as hard and two times as long. And you can't go back to the client and say, hey, guess what? Now we've got another a thousand dollars worth of axles to buy. You don't go back and ask for more money. You've no, already signed up the for contract's the contract. done. That's it. You signed a contract. Yep. And, and that's what done. people don't get with these older cars. The time, the things you run into when you go across this kind of stuff, you can't tell by looking at, let me show you, looking at this wheel, that this is a five lug wheel. You can't tell there's any modification there, correct? Correct. You can't look at this drum and see that it's any modification, correct? Correct. So you have no idea until you're completely down, torn into the rear, finding out that, hey, guess what? We just added another two days worth of time to the job.
two days because you have shipping time and parts ordering time. Again, you can't go back to the client and say, I need more money. We should have caught that up front. It happens. But how do you catch something like you, that you without really stripping can't. into the whole thing? It's like body work. It's like body work. When you're grinding into it, the car looks freaking great. They, maybe the clear coat's peeling a little bit. And someone's like, yeah, it just needs to be sanded and reshot. Okay, the second I sand that and you get behind it, and there's literally a half inch of Bondo because the car has been smashed on that side. Then you're like, well, listen, if I put paint on top of this, I've already opened it up. It's going to bubble in six months or 12 months. Then you have a crap job. You have a pissed off client and you have a poor quality name out there. So you have to take the time and do everything right, no matter what it is you're doing, upholstery, paint and body, mechanical, all the way across the board, it has to be right. Again, what is our typical ROI on a job? Not it's a lot. none by the time you end up going through stuff like this. People think that because you do entertainment stuff and because you have nice cars, you're making millions of dollars. <laughs> Nothing can be further from the truth. So Bob, you're gonna remove the old lugs out of that axle and set it up properly for the six lug setup now. Yep, that's which exactly is what you should have. have. That's the way it should be done. But I think what I'm gonna to have to do is redesign the entire system. Because again, now we're working with two different items. We're working with a disc brake kit that's built for a truck. We're working, fighting against that with a set of wheels that is not for this truck, but was put on this truck. I can't just change the rear wheels to a six lug because then I'm gonna have six lug in the rear and five in the front the way the front was modified. Most people wouldn't thing, care. Right, most people wouldn't care. So ultimately the best thing to do is A, I drill this to a five, which would be a five by five lug pattern. I drill this to a five by, oh, I'm sorry. It's not even the five by five lug pattern that, so a lot of guys out there are probably like, oh, it's a GM, it's a five by five. No, incorrect. They drilled this to a five by four and three quarter, which is a smaller Camaro S10 style bolt pattern. So even if I drill this to a five by four and three quarter, I'm going to have done nothing more than what they did. The same cheap, easy modification to make the system fit because of those wheels. So do I drill these rotors and that's it? And we just leave it as kind of poo-poo as it is with the same axle setup? Or do I buy new axles and then have custom rotors drilled for it? So then you're at another $1,500, which we already know the client doesn't want to do because he's at a certain limit in this truck. As a budget, like everybody. The budget is and what the value of this truck is, what he paid at Barrett Jackson, plus the upgrades we're doing to it here, you have to keep that line very tight because we don't want to see the clients, anyone out there go in over your head. It happens too often. You put 60 into a car, it's worth 30, not worth it, total loss, you, you just shot yourself in the foot. Don't waste your time. Mr. Producer, did you have a question, sir? Um, you guys have questions from uh, Joseph Kramer, you guys Hey, good morning, Joe, how are you doing? Uh, what's the question, Mr. Producer? When looking at upgrading disc brake calipers, in your opinion, does the number of pistons matter more Depends on the application. Yeah. The question, ladies and gentlemen, is are more piston calipers, pistons being the pistons, are the cups that sit right here. You can see this right here. This is a single piston, single piston. It's right here. When you step on the brake, the brake line goes through here. The fluid pushes this piston out, which pushes these pads against the rotor, which causes friction to stop the vehicle. Um, Bob, over to you. Are so, more pistons better? Uh, yes and no, Joe. That's a really good question. Um, if you are adding pistons, there are a lot of guys, especially in the aftermarket caliper world, you can buy upgraded calipers to your stock braking system. If you already have a disc brake kit, you can sometimes go from a factory single piston to a double piston, to a twin piston setup, or you can go to a quad piston setup, four pistons. You can go to those, however, you'll get a stronger clamping pressure, it'll be more even clamping pressure, but are you going to really increase how much you slow the car down probably minimal. If you were doing testing, you would probably see a little result, but for your average driving, no. You really wouldn't notice a difference until you start going with larger diameter systems when you go to big brake kits. When you go to those kits, you have something that is rotating much larger. When it clamps that force, it has a lot more to slow that surface area down. Same thing in turn, if you go with like a lifted truck, you go with a larger tire, it takes a lot freaking longer to slow that thing down because it's got so much more rolling resistance on those tiny little brakes. So you feel that rotational drag. So if you go with a larger system, you will clamp more efficient and it'll be much more effective braking. Very much why all of today's high-end cars have Bingo. 15, 16, Bingo. 17, Bingo. 18 inch rotors. Sometimes they're being made with carbon fiber now. Um, a lot of them are very high-end ceramic grade materials. So it's all about the size of what you're working with and also the compositry of how it's made. Which the beauty of it, Bob, you and I both own Porsches uh, with the big brake kits yep. on them. Uh, and the beauty of that system is it allows you to drive that car to its potential because mm -hmm. you know within you're a moment's notice it. you can get it back under control very mm -hmm. quickly. If you've never driven a very high-end exotic uh, vehicle, Joe, go to a dealership, drive one. You're going to be impressed at how 
quickly those vehicles respond to not only your throttle uh, and what your right foot's doing, but what your right foot's doing on that brake pedal and that, as well. That in turn too, Joe, that's great that you, you know, that, that question was great in the way I can fade into. That all comes down to personal budget. You can literally in today's world get anything you can possibly imagine. You can get stock rotors, stock pads, starting at a hundred bucks at your local parts store. You can upgrade to a cross drilled. You can upgrade to a cross drilled and slot it. Better for venting, better for cooling. Are you going to use it in your everyday driving? Most people probably not. Uh, but you can upgrade pad material from a semi-metallic to a full metallic to a ceramic to carbon infused. You can upgrade to large kits. You can upgrade to bigger pistons. You can upgrade from rubber hoses to braided lines. So there are so many upgrades you can do out there. It's all about how much cash you've got. That really is it. It's nothing it's more than that. That's just what it comes down to, how far you really want to go. It's funny, too, because you hear on some of the Harley-Davidson forums, go to upgraded uh, uh, braided lines, you'll feel such a difference. No, not at all, man. For, Absolutely For the not. average driver and rider, you do not feel the small upgrades. You feel the big upgrades. If you do a very big disc brake conversion, you can feel that freaking upgrade right yeah, away. You are. But if you're just going from, you know, for small stuff, for basic do-it-yourselfers, if you pull rotors and pads off and you maybe upgrade to the next step, you might feel a touch of a difference, but really, are you going to notice too much of a difference? No. No. You no. Won't. You'll get a better quality, that's it. This particular kit, Bub, speaking of which, comes with rubber hoses back yep. here. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's enough. It works, Joe. Yep. It just, it does. Uh, this is part of the hardware kit with it. Uh, these are the brackets that were custom machined for this, uh, which we initially received that were wrong. These are here now, and we've worked around the axle problem. Yep. But these are the brackets that will mount the caliper. Yep. But how do we know the difference between this caliper being a front caliper or a rear caliper? Well, what is the difference? Yeah, very easy. And this is, uh, this Joe is, a, is actually a single piston caliper. So going to your pistons again, this is a single piston caliper. This is more than enough for this truck and what this client is doing. Could the client put bears on here? Yes. Don't need to. Nine thousand dollars later, you to. can put Bayer brakes on there. They're huge. They're sixteen-inch rotors. They're bright red calipers. They're six-piston front and rear calipers. They're huge. They look great. They look really good behind a set of wheels like this. It looks like you've got a stack of cash and you just threw it at your brake system. Is he going to use them? No. no. Not at all. So we opted to go with a single-piston GM factory placement setup. This is going to be like this truck was ordered in 1968 with a disc brake conversion on it. So all the parts will be available. When the client runs through these pads, this is a very generic General Motors caliper. He can go to any local parts store and get any of these brake pads or those rotors easily on the spot. And that's where it's important for me to do the job right on the install. Because if I modify this rotor and he goes through this rotor in five years, four years, three years, anyone, us, this client, the future client, whoever next purchases this truck, how are they going to get that? Set? Ladies and gentlemen, it is about doing a good job. It's what we call doing a bubble stop. Bub, identify how that, how I could tell the difference is the average guy. Ah, yes, yes. And our producer yes. has a question, just a yes. second. How does the average guy know whether that's a front or a rear? Yeah, so this is very simple in identification. This is nothing more than easily identified by the fact that it has an e-brake mechanism on it. This is a manually operated emergency brake. So when you set it, left foot on the floor of the truck, this is actually what operates on the side right here where the spring is that I'm pulling on with my finger. And Bob, one other question about that caliber. We also we also hear often hear people throwing around terms like loaded and unloaded mm -hmm. calipers. Yeah. Can you tell the audience what's the difference between a loaded and an yeah, unloaded so caliper? For you, okay, so great example, great question. If you're out and you're doing a front brake job, maybe one of your calipers is locking up and the car starts pulling after you're driving for a few minutes or you have a hose collapsing and you want to just replace your calipers, put all new hardware. Maybe you have a leaking seal coming from the piston because it is hydraulic, there's fluid behind it. There's a rubber seal on the inside of the piston itself. If that starts leaking, maybe you just want to go to your local store, get a stock replacement caliper. Typically you want to do them in pairs. If one's going, the other one's probably getting ready to. Especially those of you in the Northeast with salt yes. on the roads. But you'll want to install something that is, for, for the average guy, unloaded is cheap if they've got it. There's nothing wrong with unloaded. However, loaded comes with everything you need. The mounting hardware, all of your clips, and the brake pads themselves. So you literally would take this thing out of the box and stick it on the car and run these two silver bolts in it, and it's done. Sounds like something nasty's pulling up out there. But one other question know, about it sounds kind of basic. I hear it, but it, I feel like, wait, maybe 300 horse. 300 horse. Maybe. There you go. But there's one other thing I'd like to ask you about this before we go to the question. I notice on this inside brake pad, there's a piece of metal that's sitting right here. Can anybody yep. see that piece of metal right there? And I believe that we call that a telltale, Bob. Yeah, yeah, so this is nothing more than an actual indicator that comes molded to your brake pad, sometimes on the inside, sometimes on the outside pad, depending on your vehicle and the way the system's set up. This is an indicator that once your brake pads get to that halfway mark, this will start dragging 
on your brake rotor. Some people completely ignore it. When you hear that squeak, it's squeaking for a reason. Get it checked. Don't ride until this thing sounds like grinding metal in the back. This is literally meant to tell you it's a very thin piece of a metal. It flexes. It's meant to flex so it doesn't eat into the rotor. It's meant to flex but meant to rub on your brake rotor so it creates a squeal. It creates a scraping sound. So you get them checked out. Don't ride this thing until you literally hear nothing more than serious grinding sound. You will you will be down to you'll have to the purchase a rotor plate. Yep. Point. You'll get into the backing plate right here, the metal backing plate that holds the pad to the backing plate. You'll get that'll be a metal to metal contact with the rotor and tear it up. Mr. Producer, did you have a question, sir? Uh, first off, we have some comments from Dave uh, Croco. Hey, good morning, Dave. How, How are, are you? you? Dave is the owner of Lot 378, the vehicle you see behind us, the very fine pickup truck that we're bringing down the home stretch. Good morning, Dave. How are you? Thank you for joining us today from Toronto, Canada. Bob, no, but right. soon to be in Palm Beach, Florida. But uh, he'll be here. And Dave, by the way, ladies and gentlemen around the world, has a birthday coming up on the 11th. Happy uh -oh. birthday, my friend. Go ahead, Mr. Producer. All right, well, uh, first off, he says, uh, make it safe, guys. Make it so. Then he says, uh, thanks for stepping up to the plate. I'd like it so I can get a rotor anywhere when it needs to be changed out. And uh, you guys are pros, so he really appreciates it. Well, Absolutely, Dave. Dave paid us a very nice compliment about Bub looking forward into the future and building with the correct set of rotors, and he's paying that compliment forward, saying thank you very much. Well, you're welcome, Dave. And that's thanks key. Us for stepping you know, that's key too. Is um, you know, like I mentioned before, ensuring that the client is at a financially safe place by the time you're all in. You know, with everything that's got to get done, everything the vehicle needs, the total cost of the vehicle. You can get upside down in these older cars super quick, man. People don't really understand and how we quick do. you can. Um, you get upside down them, and you have to make sure that you're at a very comfortable zone to where the client's not getting hurt. It's supposed to be about fun with these older cars, man, and nobody makes it fun anymore. Whether you're in upside down or over your head, it's gonna be a total loss, it's a dread at that point. Um, or if you've got part fitment where you've literally gotta have a book in your glove box that tells you these things are from this kind of vehicle and this is from this kind of, that's nonsense, man. That's not the way you build in today's companies that are in this world, in the product world. You can buy anything for anything. You can. you can. Hey, Dave, one quick question for you, if you could respond to the producer. Would you like us to keep, Bob, can you hold up the old drum assembly? Would you like us to keep the old drum assembly for you? I will I'd like to offer this. my clients their parts back if they like them. This is the latest and gentlemen. It's actually upside down. Oh, this, there you go. This is, ladies and gentlemen, the old drum assembly. Uh, as fluid comes through this wheel cylinder right here, it pushes these pistons out, which pushes the brake shoe. The brake shoe, these were formerly made with asbestos, the very dangerous asbestos. It pushes the brake shoe That's out where you get the mesothelioma. Mesothelioma. Call 1-800... I don't know the Isco and Green. Um, <laughs> but these pads push out against a brake drum that sits over here and stops the car. Back in the olden days, the, all, all four of your brakes at all four corners were made of this setup, which created a lot system. of... Yeah, terrible. Poles, it created a lot of poles, and it was a very, very labor-intensive system. Sloppy. It wasn't. It wasn't the best. No, it wasn't no. the best at all. So, Dave, let us know if you'd like to keep those and parts. Not many not cars more. come with drum brakes anymore. Today's I mean, world, disc brake is pretty standard. Yeah, it I mean, used to be upgraded prices. You know, fifteen hundred more, twenty-five hundred more. Heck, back in the day, upgraded disc brakes were what two hundred, yeah. maybe. 150. I know, Bub, you're getting ready to do the Monkey in Paradise uh, Corvette. Yeah. Uh, we were, I was working with Unity over there to, uh, yesterday on some suspension identification of parts for you. Uh, that car is going to be a track. It's going to be a full street track car. Slash, yeah, street strip. Yeah. Um, Total track use, laying down a lot of horsepower, man. You were really, really, leading, really yep. exotic looks to it. Aggressive, yep. fat, stance. Sick. And speaking of which, ladies and gentlemen, we have a huge announcement coming out of the Monkey in Paradise camp on Saturday. Stay tuned. As we're jo jo uh, joined live uh, with Alex from yep. Monkey in Paradise. Given and Tony Reeves will be with us. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Given that Big release. News. Mr. Producer, question, sir. I guess we got another one coming from Joseph Kramer. Why are some rumors not compatible with A? Okay, so Joe is asking, uh, ladies and gentlemen, why are some rotors not compatible with ABS? Yeah, so I mean, that's that's a really good question, Joe. There's so much information to get into in terms of anti-lock brake systems, ABS, traction control systems, especially in modern cars. There are a lot of features that work hand in hand. Some rotors will have ABS exciter rings. It's literally there you go. a There's magnetic your ring that has multiple pickups or steps or ridges on it in a complete full array, 360 degrees of rotation all the way around some of the inner lip portion of it or on the axle, depending on if you have a front wheel drive, rear wheel drive. Sounds like a Ferrari now, Paul. That's out. definitely, yeah, that's that's a higher and exotic. I like that. Um, <laughs> <there are laughs> 
Okay. There are multiple styles of great rotor configurations and all of those features incorporate something different. Some of them will say with ABS, some will say two wheel drive, some will say four wheel drive and all of that matters in your specific application. I explained that to you this morning in terms of vehicle fitment with today's tires. Yeah. As simple as it gets, today's tires are getting sophisticated when it comes to what model line your vehicle is. You have a Ford F-150, is it a, you ready for this? Is it an FX4, King Lariat, King Ranch, Eddie, uh, Bauer, Eddie Bauer edition? Every one of those vehicles is a different Low wheel and tire combo. Yeah. So you have to know to this, literally to the T, everything you are working with, and that's where guys like myself or any builders in the industry have to be so well versed with what they're doing. You can't just say, oh, it's a 13 F-150, can I have a, a front brake? You can't do it. You have to go all the way and tell them everything you're working with in and out, start to finish. The engine, the transmission, automatic, uh, manual, four wheel drive, two wheel drive, rear wheel drive, front wheel drive, all the way down the line. Absolutely. So it's a lot. I'm so out of breath, sure dude. I gotta go. go. I gotta get back to work. And ladies and gentlemen, this right here, we haven't discussed this. Oh man, here we go. It. Here comes Paul. Uh, Bob, why don't you share with everybody what this is here? It's still in the package, but yep. tell, share with everybody what we got. Yeah. So what you're looking at right now is the hydraulic brake assist. This is the power booster assembly that's vacuum operated. Firewall mounted just like factory. This again, this is from Classic Performance. This is meant for this truck. You order it off the shelf, 68 Chevrolet C10, 68 to 72 actually, any of the two wheel drive models. This master cylinder, what's key, what's important, because we are doing a four wheel disc brake kit, this is valved for front rear disc. So it is going to be set up exactly the way it should be to power all four wheel disc brakes so that everything operates as it should. So when the client goes out, his complaint was a very hard pedal, very, very, you had to smash it down to really get the truck to respond and slow itself down. Well, you also found the it vacuum be, The vacuum lines were all wrong too. Um, once you have a power booster and you have a properly valved braking system in terms of its hydraulic components and master cylinder, all of that stuff will operate 100% super smooth like you're driving one of today's cars. That's how it should. That's the point of today's companies, all of their R&D that goes into everything they do. They take the time, they understand it, they know what they're building for, what their end goal is, and they provide it at a local level. They also provide, Bob, this handy little kit right here, which is, as you can see, a plastic tube and some clips that allow you to bench bleed bench bleed the master cylinder yep. before you put it on the vehicle. It's a smart thing to do because you don't have brake fluid working around the painted surfaces. It will eat Which the will paint eat right, right through away. It, right yeah. through it. Yep. Do your bench bleeding prior to anything like that. Uh, Bub, I'm going to let you get back into this thing. you got a lot of work to do yeah. here. It's been a good segment today. I yep. wanted to bring it to everybody, kind of share it with them live. I remind you to please pick up your free copy of In Jupiter Magazine. In Jupiter has Mr. Reynolds, has us, has Miss Outlaw Boutique, has Scott Sharp, the Patron race driver. Yep. Everybody's in this edition, and really they good. are giving you a one-year subscription for $24.95 anywhere around the world it's an amazing magazine people please pick this up uh, go to in jupiter magazine just google it there on the internet and you'll run into it monkey in paradise monkey in paradise.com what is your paradise bub what is your hey paradise? i know what my paradise is Absolutely. my paradise was this past week sunfest until sunday night dude i don't know what happened i turned into a freaking wwe championship there i swear to god there was nothing more than literally people just laying on the floor getting knocked out there were bottles broken all over people's heads I was literally, I grabbed Layla and Matt. I was like, yo, we're out. Monkey and I was paradise. like, I don't want to go home tonight having freaking getting arrested because I'm going to yeah. knock some guy in the exactly. face and he's acting like an idiot. Yeah. Monkey in Paradise, I was to. remind you to drink responsibly. Be with us Saturday when Alex from Monkey in Paradise is here. They've got a big super, announcement. Super, super big announcement. Pretty much going to, well, take over the world. Take it over. Yes, that's it. They did. Miss Outlaw Boutique, that's msoutlawboutique.com. Layla Von Athey does it every time. Every time. Every time. TonyRienzi.com. Here with us uh, Saturday as well, Buster. Yep. Dot com and, and he's out. Dot com and he's out. He's. A, we had a chance to watch him fire off on somebody. I told everybody hey. he's the Donald Trump of cars. We well, you him. don't take crap from anyone, dude. It's that simple. Yep. You don't. Like if you're doing a service for someone else, don't treat them like dog trash. Actually, it's that actually, simple. Yeah, you're, you're asking me for help, but you're treating me this way. Nope. You were pretty no. fired up as well there, Bob. I was just letting him know. I was in the middle of my workout, by the way. That's exactly right. <laughs> Bob is exotic motorsports. Bob, you'll be doing the show alone yeah, uh, tomorrow. Come on. Uh, I'll be out on the road. Yeah. Again, I got to do both parties. Yeah, you got to do both parties. So Great. Stay that's always a fun show. We'll Great. Be back uh, live with you Thursday. I think Thursday. Let's see. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Thursday. Maybe Thursday and Friday will be alone. Depends on how. No, I don't Tuesday, know what the deal is. Wednesday, Thursday. Who knows? I don't know. Bob. You don't even know. I don't know. I have no idea. All right. I'm lost. 
I know. I'm clueless. Yeah. Actually, we'll be back live with you Thursday. I think so. Tomorrow you'll be alone Wednesday. I might I'll not be on do the road, it tomorrow. Uh, taking care of business. I'm just going to be sitting in my office with like my hands like this. That's what's going to be. That's it. Sounds like that's the show. Watch, Bub. Let's Watch. jump on out of here uh, until tomorrow, Bub. Just keep on doing it, Bubba style. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you reach out to touch somebody's life in a very positive manner. Open the door for an elder. Last night we went out to have some dinner. My wife said, "Let's go grab something to eat." And as we approached the door, I saw an elderly man with his wife trying to get up there and his knees were bandaged and he could barely make it to the door. That was my responsibility to stop. And I did just that. And I told the lady, you don't have to worry. I'll take care of your husband. We'll get him in there. And he took very short shuffled steps. You didn't and ask took him to pull up minutes. his car, did you? I didn't ask him. No, I pulled his car up for him. Oh, and it took literally 15 crazy. minutes to get him probably 20 feet and he needed to take breaks. The restaurant manager came out and said, can I do anything? I said, yeah, get the gentleman a glass of water. And we sat down and he had a glass of water. And as we took another 10 steps, there was a wheelchair sitting there that belonged to another patron of the restaurant. I balled the wheelchair and let him sit there. We eventually got him to his table. Actually, they sat at a high back table at the, uh, by the bar because it was good for his back. But we got him in there and everybody said, thank you. No need for thanks. Make sure you reach out to touch somebody's life in a positive way today. Open the door for an elder. Choose somebody who's got a hole in their feet or in their shoes and not in their feet. I've been told about that before. Or feed somebody that's hungry. Until tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, keep on doing it. Bubba style. Bubba, what do you want me to do to help you out uh, here? Is there anything I can get going for you? Uh, no, I just need to start going through the axle situation.